Welcome to our brief introduction of the Big Three Theories of Learning. In this presentation, we'll introduce you briefly to the Big Three Theories, which are Behaviorism, Cognitivism, and Constructivism. Learning is defined differently according to each theory. For behaviorism, learning is defined as the empirical, observable, and measurable behaviors of learners. In cognitivism, learning is the acquisition of knowledge and mental structures to process and sort information. The focus is on the formation of the student's learning process and how information is received, organized, stored, and retrieved in the mind. It's not what learners do, but what they know. Like cognitivism, constructivism sees learning as an active mental activity. Unlike behaviorism and cognitivism, however, it sees reality and our knowledge of it as relative and individualized. Each of us constructs knowledge that is relative to how we experience the world. Social constructivists believe that we must negotiate with others to construct knowledge, while other constructivists believe that knowledge construction is an individual pursuit. Briefly put, we make meaning by doing. Each of the three learning theories has its own key principles. The defining element of behaviorism is the inclusion of the scientific method to study learning. As such, behaviorist research revolved solely around the effect of a stimulus on a learner's behavior. The purpose of behaviorist studies is to identify the, how an association between a stimulus and response is made, strengthened, or maintained. More plainly put, behaviorism focuses on new behavioral pattern being repeated until it becomes automatic. Cognitivism, however, stresses the complex cognitive processes like thinking, problem solving, language, con language, concept formation, and information processing. The acquisition of knowledge can be directly related to the observation of others through social settings and experience. The mind is viewed as a computer and explained with the metaphorical approach called mind is computer. And students' mental processing is referred to cognitive information processing. Cognitivism emphasizes the role of environmental conditions, practice and feedback, and mental activities that lead to a learner's response. According to Ertmar Newby, the real focus of cognitive approach is on changing the learner by encouraging him or her to use appropriate learning strategies. Constructivism, however, feels that knowledge is not an absolute idea that can be transferred from one person to another. Our perception of the world is individualized, a product of our interpretation of our experiences. We develop these interpretations by interacting with each other, our community, and the environment. And those interpretations help us construct knowledge by deciding how to accommodate new experiences. We can either change our previous knowledge to accommodate the new information, change the new information to fit existing knowledge, or reject the new information entirely. Cognitivism and constructivism look at thought, which is ignored by behaviorists. The role of the learner is different according to each learning theory. In the behaviorist tradition, learners have one purpose, and that is to perform a desired response. In cognitivism, each individual is responsible for their own learning, and learners have to be actively engaged in the learning process. A constructivist learner creates knowledge together with the teacher and other learners. Learners are not passive receptors of knowledge. They are in control of the learning experience, manipulating information according to their own context, interpreting and elaborating on that information. Their internal knowledge is not fixed and can always change based on new information. In order to elicit the desired response, behaviorist instructors should figure out the cues needed to elicit the desired response, design practice scenarios for learners to develop an association between the stimulus and response by use of stimulus conditioning, and design real life situations in which students can perform the desired response. In cognitivism, the instructor must consider how new knowledge is presented, New knowledge needs to be not only meaningful and relatable to existing knowledge, it must be based on the student's current mental structures. More specifically, this is taking what the learner already knows and connecting new knowledge to existing schema. The constructivist teacher facilitates active learning, creating complex real-world projects that will allow learners to develop problem-solving skills. The teacher must monitor their students, intervening when necessary to scaffold or otherwise guide them to think like an expert. The father of behaviorism is Ivan Pavlov, who developed the theory of classical conditioning in which stimuli are conditioned to elicit a conditioned response. Edward Thorndike furthered the behaviorist tradition with his law of effect, while John B. Watson brought the behaviorist tradition to the U.S. with his infamous Little Albert conditioning experiment. Most recent in the behaviorist camp was B.F. Skinner, whose operant conditioning updated the classical conditioning theory. 
In cognitivism, Edward Tolman further developed latent learning. He studied the effects of reinforcement and found rats to have a mental map of the maze he used. Albert Bandura is best known for his social learning theory, which stresses the importance of observational learning. One of the major players in the development of cognitivism is Jean Piaget, who developed the major aspects of his cognitive development theory as early as the 1920s. We'll learn more about him in a moment. One of the original constructivists was progressive educator John Dewey, who proposed the idea of active learning and theorized that knowledge was built on existing knowledge. In the 1960s, Jerome Bruner wrote about the influence of environment and experience on learners, proposing a spiraled curriculum that returns repeatedly to the same ideas to develop student understanding. Cognitivism shares Jean Piaget as a key contributor. Piaget saw children as active learners predisposed to individualistic learning. His assimilation accommodation theory says that when we encounter new information, we either assimilate it into existing knowledge or alter existing knowledge to accommodate the new information. Lev Vygotsky developed social constructivism, which says that knowledge is created only when others help us to complete an act. He created the zone of proximal development, the content that students can learn with the help of a more knowledgeable learner. Each of the three learning theories have their own strengths. According to Harrison, behaviorist theory is useful when learning very specific and discrete learning steps and in their mechanization of the instructional process through new forms of learning technologies such as teaching machines, programmed instruction, and computer-assisted instruction. Cognitivism is often associated with lifelong learning and the strengths can be found in improving problem-solving skills such as analytical and creative thinking. Additionally, cognitivism can be used in the explanation of complex learning such as information processing, judging, and reasoning. Because constructivism aims towards complex thinking and problem solving, it is excellent for learning tasks that require high levels of cognitive processing. Interconnected online environments such as those found online are the perfect environment for open-ended constructivist exploration. And because the learning focuses on flexible thinking in the real world, the skills students learn are highly transferable to other environments. Like strengths, each of the three learning theories has weaknesses. The primary weakness in behaviorism is that it does not address the internal mental processes involved in learning. Instead, it solely addresses behaviors. Behaviors do not necessarily reflect learning. Harasim also notes that behaviorism, when viewed through a modern perspective, is limited and rigid in its perspective, but it was seen as revolutionary at its time of inception. As behaviorism focuses solely on observable stimulus response association, it does not explain most social behaviors. Because cognitivism is associated with thought, we find two major weaknesses. First, data is difficult to measure and quantify because thought is not tangible, and the unique intricacies of humans make the comparison of the mind and the computer unrealistic. The complexities of constructivist teaching and its reliance on existing knowledge creates some problems for constructivism. The open-ended classroom environment requires careful planning, constant monitoring, and mental flexibility from a teacher. Applefield, Hubbard, and Mullum say the number of on-the-spot decisions that teachers must make in a constructivist learning environment requires skillful, reflective, and spontaneous teachers who are capable of monitoring, coaching, and facilitating students' learning. Learning objectives and assessments should be developed in conjunction with students, which some teachers may not be comfortable with and measuring progress can be very difficult for different reasons in different classes. And because of the higher level thinking and basic knowledge required, constructivist instruction is not suitable for novice learners or introductory material.